Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, the ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build, so please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this and let's build a better world together for future generations. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Daryl Urbanski, and we are truly blessed because we have with us here today Jim Bunch, who is obviously a well-accomplished entrepreneur, but he's also been a phenomenal friend, mentor, and just just a good soul. Um, when I first met him, it was at a fundraising party in Del Mar and right off the bat when I saw him we were all getting food and going to this room to eat he just looked like the person I wanted to talk to in the room and in five seconds I just felt so super comfortable with him and just ever since that meeting he's just proven to be a truly great person a great humanitarian uh, definitely a maker of the peace and he, he's just really really a stand-up guy um, through just of observation he's a wonderful father a loving husband and someone I am very very grateful to be able to pick up the phone and call like this um, so some of the more technical stuff or how you other people might know him is, you know, he, Jim is known as the ultimate life entrepreneur who's on a mission to inspire happiness, health, and wealth worldwide. He's the founder of the Ultimate Game of Life programs. Um, I have personal friends who have actually been through those programs and it's changed their life as well as 10,000 plus other people's lives. Um, his two passions are technology and transformation. So whether it's launching a new business venture or helping an entrepreneur upgrade their life, there's a common thread you'll find in whatever Jim Bunch does. And that's inspiring and bringing out the best in people. I can attest to this. Most recently, Jim launched a social mobile technology company that transformed the way people interact on the planet and gained 1 million users in 250 plus countries in 79 days. He has over 19 years of professional speaking experience and has given more than a thousand presentations on business and life transformation. Today, he writes, lectures, and serves as the chairman of the board with the U.S. Green Chamber of Commerce. Jim, thank you for being here today. How are you doing? I'm great, Daryl. It's great to connect with you and all your inspiring entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, thank you. You, you definitely uh, are on the forefront of that. I mean, you've been a mover and shaker for a lot of your career. Um, you've still got plenty of gas in the tank, um, but something that <clears throat> maybe we could talk a little bit about your background and how you even got started, because some of the people that are listening to this might know you and your background, your history, and some of them won't. So kind of how did you get started? What were you doing long before you came into any sort of marketing or internet marketing or real estate or speaking and coaching, what were you doing like way back in the day? <laughs> you make it sound like it was so long ago. And I guess it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's funny, my entrepreneurial bug actually hit uh, kind of by mistake. I was, you know, my, my stepfather was a, a small business entrepreneur. He was an electrician. My mom was a dental hygienist. So being around um, my mom, I thought I wanted to be a dentist, right? So I went pre-med at University of Florida and something interesting happened. You know, I had to, I had to work in order to help pay for college. And I was working at UPS, 4 o'clock in the morning to 9 a.m. And then I'd come back and I'd go to the med labs from 10 o'clock until 2 or 3 or whenever. And then I'd go teach tennis and that. So I kind of had an entrepreneurial bug with the teaching tennis piece. But what really happened is at UPS, one of the guys who was working there – now keep in mind, this is 4 o'clock in the morning – and most people are not bright eyed and bushy tailed at 4 a.m., right? <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Especially right. doing that kind of physical labor. I mean, you're, you're unloading trucks and you're, you're throwing boxes and all this kind of stuff. And this one guy, Tom, always seemed like he was happy. He always seemed like he was on fire at 4 a.m. And everybody else is just mumbling and grumbling and all this. So come to find out what he was so excited about was this nutrition product. But what he was really excited about was not just the nutrition product, but the network marketing opportunity behind it. <laughs> so I'm sure we can all relate to having been exposed to somebody who's passionate about changing the world and becoming financially free. Well, I bought it hook, line, and sinker and got into it. And I, and I did make uh, enough money. I made about three to 4,000 a month in retail sales. And it was enough for me to leave UPS and kind of look like I was living the dream, right? Right. That's awesome. Yeah. But what really happened was, is it, it got me to realize that what I was interested in, in school was not becoming a dentist or a doctor. I was interested in helping people, but I wanted to do it through business. 
And one thing led to another. The MLM never made me a hundred grand a month or any of the kind of stories that you hear. I just didn't understand leadership at the time, but it did through one vein or another end up introducing me to Tony Robbins. Hmm. And that was kind of the piece that, that taught me that if I, if I worked on my inner game, if I worked on my belief system, my mindset, uh, those kind of things that, that I could actually then change my life. And that was a pivotal point for me. I was in my early 20s, and I actually decided to go work for Tony Robbins for free or for 100% commission. And I traveled the world, you know, Canada, U.S., and, and teaching and selling his information because then I knew I would ingrain it. Right. And so that thing led to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and I got involved in business and technology and, and uh, just kind of grew from there. Got it. So it really came in the early days from just a development that if you work on yourself, your life could change. Is that yeah. Cool? yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people, you know, there's this thing called a belief system, right? Well, when, before Tony, I had no idea what a belief was. I'm like, what do you mean a belief? What is that? I didn't even know they existed. Right. So, you know, he said, if you change your beliefs, you can change your life. Well, that was fantastic. I thought, well, I definitely want to change my life. I want to make more money. I want to be in better shape. I want to, you know, I want to be happier, all these things. And so, you know, I, I mentored and studied with him to learn everything I could because this guy was on fire and was changing a lot of people's lives. Right, right. And that's so true. That's a really, really big and important critical piece because I know uh, just we've talked about that too, the story that you tell yourself or play out in your mind. And, and that often, at least for me, I see, or at least in my looking back in my career, that often that that was some of the biggest challenges for myself was overcoming my my own beliefs my own systems my own like you know bullshit and concrete that's been pounded into my head is is that kind of like what you'd say was one of your greatest challenges too or what's kind of been kind of your greatest milestones or aha moments along the paths well, I think that's that's two questions. I think any time that you um, you know that you really understand your inner game, you understand your belief systems or what we call your memetics or any of that, then you can start to realize that the financial results you're producing are a byproduct of the beliefs you have, you know, the physical body that you have and the food that you eat and the way you exercise is all a result of your beliefs because your beliefs drive your behavior. So I don't want to sound like Tony Robbins here because what I started learning later on is the beliefs are very powerful. That's, that's about 40% of the equation. But what's also really important is the outer game and the environments that you surround yourself with. Mm. And most people don't realize the impact of the nine environments, that we call it, which was taught to me by another mentor. Um, but if you don't do your environments properly, if you're not doing life by design, you're doing life by default. And most people just kind of accept whoever comes into their life. They accept whatever job comes into their life. They accept whatever friends come into their life. They accept whatever associations or groups or clubs that come into their life. And next thing you know, they get five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road. And what they realize is their success has become a byproduct of the people that they invest the most time with. And if you do that by default, sometimes that can work out. Like I was lucky when I was younger. I met Tony Robbins. That put me down one path. Then I met Bob Proctor and John Ashraf. And the next thing you know, I met all these different business owners. And I met, you know, for one thing led to the next and the next and the next. I was fortunate. Right. But some people never get out of their home environment. They never get beyond the group of friends that they talk to every day. They don't expand like you've been doing their network and, and connecting with other people who are shining lights in the world. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's so important. Jim Rohn has a quote saying that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I think that's really true. I mean, I can I can definitely highlight times that exactly as you say, your environments. I had a, uh, another buddy, Chris, I forget his last name, but he used to say it was skill set mindset and environment and it was those three pieces that were so important you could be you could know, have the best skill set in the world but if your mindset sucked then you weren't going to get anywhere and even if you had the best skill set and mindset if you're in the wrong environment <clears throat> which sounds like there's nine different environments um, then that's going to be limiting you as well um, what are these nine different environments? I'm kind of, you really piqued my interest with that. <laughs> well, I think that that's a longer conversation, but I, there's all kinds of free resources and stuff I'll give to you and the rest of the audience. It's something that one of my mentors, Thomas Leonard, who's now passed away, shared with me. And I asked him one time, I said, why is it so many people want to change their results in life? They want to change their finances. They want to pay off debt. They want to build a successful business. They want to build passive income. They want to take a company public. They want to do all these things. 
but they struggle over and over and over again. And he said it's because they're trying to use willpower instead of the environments. Mm, that's and, awesome. And, and so I'll, I'll happily, you know, give you and the rest of the audience here a link. It's stuff that we share around the world to anybody who wants to change your life. It's one of the most powerful things, um, you know, that I've ever run across. And there's a, there's all kinds of modules and stuff on it. So that's awesome. Now, this is I don't know if there's a sidetrack or not, but I kind of a bit of a philosophical question. Is there like a, a, a top to this crazy mountain we're on as entrepreneurs? Is there, you know, do we ever arrive anywhere or, or is this kind of a bit of a treadmill? I remember hearing Michael Gerber speak once and he was kind of making saying, you know, there's no top to this mountain. Like we're all just climbing endlessly. And I just kind of you, you've just come again. You've still got plenty of gas in the tank, but you've already done so much and accomplished so much. Uh, accomplish what's for some other people would be like a life life goal and for you it's just one stop along the road of your your story that's unfolding and so just for you kind of in your perspective having a, done these things that other people aspire to do um looking back like i don't know has it changed it for you is it like how does that how does that evolve like you know taking a company public or you know trying to hit a million dollars in net worth or trying to change over a thousand people's lives like when you when you've got those things as goals and you start checking them off like what like do you get become complacent how do you keep the drive to succeed beyond that level like how like well, it, it's funny. It's a, it's an interesting question, and and I think it all depends on where you're at in your life and phases. And and I never realized this until I got a little older, got a family, son, this kind of thing. But you know, there there are certain cycles that all entrepreneurs go through. There are certain challenges that all entrepreneurs go through. And the the beautiful thing about it is, is if you can if you can surround yourself with people who are a little further down the road, they can help make those challenges a little easier to overcome. Um, but as far as you know, what drives or motivates people, there there's really three things that that I have noticed. Number one, at the very base, you know, people have needs. You know, we have we have these core needs that are that Maslow talked about, you know, the need for sex, the need for food, the need for shelter. So we got our six basic human needs. And and you know, here in the United States, most people have most of those met. Not always. There are people that are living in tent cities and things like that right now right. that unfortunately because of the economy they, you know, they were out of position. Um, but you know, when you get your basic needs met, then you start looking at what's called your personal needs. And in coaching, for example, there's over 200 personal needs, and that might be a need to be heard or a need to connect or a need to be touched or a need to be understood or any of these kind of things. And what happens is I use it like this metaphor of a car with four wheels. If you're driving down the road and one of those wheels falls off the car, that car is not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> so, so if you have a need to be heard, well, maybe you need to start a podcast or maybe you need to be on stage or maybe you need to, to join a movement, right? Mm. Um, you know, if you have a need to be uh, connected, well, it might make sense for you to build a large network of inspiring people that are truly there to support you instead of just, you know, make fun of you or whatever. So we start to look at the, the next, besides the basic needs, are the personal needs. And what I find is when you get those needs met, there's a sense of relief. There's a sense of gratification or, yeah, a sense of relief, like, ah, the pressure's off. That's when you've got your first stage, your needs are taken care of. Yeah. The next stage is your wants. Like, what do I really want in life? And this is where a lot of people are talking about success. Like, I want a new car. I want to take a trip. I want to take a journey. I, you know, I want a new wardrobe. I want a million dollars. I want, 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 want. Right, right, okay? right. So that's perfectly fine. And a lot of people will tell themselves, well, I don't want anything. And they come from a place of scarcity or lack. What you're really wanting is you want an experience, right? So what happens is, is when you get your needs taken care of, it's a sense of relief. When you get your wants fulfilled, then there's a sense of gratification. There's that temporary ring in the bell where you go, wow, that felt really good, but it's a depreciating turn. So taking a company public, it's exciting, it's fun, and boom, you know, you can check that off the list or, or you know, purchase. 100 homes in real estate or one home, right? That's mm -hmm. Those are wants. And what I find is that's stuff that drives most people is either their needs or wants. Mm. But if you're going to play a really high level of game, you get your needs taken care of, you get your wants fulfilled, so you're not wanting all the time, and then you start working on your values. 
And when you work on your values, we've, we've developed a process with entrepreneurs where there's five core values that are really this, what we call your subconscious drivers. These are the things that you, every single day, whether you realize it or not, are subconsciously driving your behavior. They're how you're making decisions about who you're going to work with, what companies you're going to start, what kinds of relationships you're going to do, what trips you take. Most people have no clue what they are, but it's like this this unwritten or unknown software in your subconscious mind that drives your behaviors. And here's what happens. When you start to identify your values, your values are the things that you want to express more of in the world. Mm. And when you start getting in alignment with that, that's a fuel that never runs out. It doesn't matter if you hit another want or checked off another goal or whatever it is. What happens now is you wake up inspired. Inspired means the spirit within, the energy inside of you is what we're impressing out into the world. And so now you start to align your vision, your values, your mission, your purpose in life with your companies, with your family, and life becomes fulfilling instead of just successful. Hmm. Got it. So those are the three. And by the way, if you, if you go after a values-driven life, but you haven't taken care of your wants and needs, you'll have a temporary sense of fulfillment, but you won't have long-term success fulfillment. And, and here's the big piece. When you understand your values, your wants, and your needs, the biggest, most important thing is not what you say yes to. It's what you can say no to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's so – just for me, it's funny because just yesterday, I was talking with a friend, just, hey, how you been? Long time no talk. Um, and I just say, you know, I've actually been working on saying no to more things. And that's – anyways, it's just – it's funny that you mentioned that. So it's a hard thing to do. Um, I think Darren Hardy did an interview with Warren Buffett. And one of the questions he asked Warren was what is one of the – you know, one of your habits or skills that's led to your, your phenomenal success? And Warren said it was the ability to say no. And uh, I think that that's – yeah, that's really – that's really, really key. Wow, that's awesome, Jim. So for you, I mean, having already been armed with all this stuff, I mean, obviously it's a process and you didn't start the journey with all this knowledge and experience. So for you, what was one of kind of the, the hardest things that you went through in entrepreneurship and how, do you, how did you think and feel going into it? And, and in hindsight, once you overcame it, uh, what was the revelation, I guess? And... And that's kind of what I want to hear from you because for me, like you feel I, what I want, Jim, is I want to hear about, yeah, that, that, that moment or one of those moments where you, I don't know, you had this overwhelming f- sense of doubt or just fear of whether you're going to make it through this, this event or this moment. Cause as an entrepreneur, we all have ups and downs and maybe, maybe any of our listeners that are struggling right now, they can kind of find peace or connection with how you approach the problem or how you felt pre problem and post problem can, can be some sort of blueprint for them? Well, I think the biggest piece everybody who's an entrepreneur needs to understand is by nature, you've chosen a somewhat difficult path. So there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're willing to step outside of the norm and to lead. Right. And that in itself comes with a certain set of lessons. The lessons are easy. They're documented. They're easy to overcome. But if you don't see them coming, then sometimes they can, they can catch you. So I'll give you a couple of stories and a couple of examples that were, were those toughest parts in my life and were some of my greatest learning experiences. So, and, and here's what I would preframe this with is recognize that the person that I am today or the person that you are, Daryl, or the person who's listening is not the same person you were six months ago. Right. Almost every cell in your body replaces itself every 12 months. That means that even at the biological level, every cell in your body is a new cell. Your brain cells, your, your, your liver, every piece of you is new. What most people do, though, is they drag their thinking from the past into the future. So the reason that the universe, in my opinion, the reason the universe gives us these challenges is to help take our level of understanding and our awareness to another level. I don't believe there's any accidents. I think the universe does everything by perfection and the universe is never going to give you anything you can't handle and the universe is never going to give you thing, anything before you can handle it. In other words, the universe does not waste. Mm. Nothing, nothing in the universe wastes. So you're only going to get the lesson that you need the second you need it, not one second sooner, not one second later. You're only going to get that resource that you've been wanting. One, You're going to get it at exactly the time you need it, not one second sooner. Right. 
So what most people have to recognize is a lot of this is done predetermined. It's by design. Can you influence it? Yes. Can you can you change it? Absolutely. But your your job, your part of the game, if you will, is to prepare yourself to play the game at the highest level. Now, that being said, it doesn't always go the way that you think. So after having traveled with Tony Robbins and having worked with Bob Proctor and John Asraf and built some companies there, something really interesting happened. I saw thousands of people going through these seminars every weekend, and I thought that this was what I was supposed to do with my life. I thought that I was supposed to be on stages, that I was supposed to be the next Tony Robbins. People were telling me this, da 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 And then something interesting happened. I lost faith in the industry. Mm. I started seeing thousands of people getting excited, getting pumped up, getting motivated. But as I got to know them, I didn't see them actually making changes. And I started to question. I started to doubt. I started to make the industry wrong. And I went through what I would call a spiral. Now, here's the funny thing about the spiral. I ended up moving from Kansas City, which I was born in Florida, but I spent a year in Canada, a year in Kansas City. I moved to California. I didn't know anybody. I couch surfed for a couple of weeks until a friend of a friend said, hey, I'm moving to San Diego. There's no room in the main part of the house, but there's a bomb shelter underneath the bottom of the house. (laughs) I went, what? <laughs> now, here I am at the time, you know, I'm used to wearing suits and giving presentations to people about success, but I had accumulated debt. Yep. I, I went from being super confident and on stages to living in a bomb shelter yep. because I didn't have any money left. But the reason and the worst part, the hardest part was, is not that I was just financially broke. I was spiritually broke. Hmm. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I started doubting and questioning whether I could be on stage, whether I could tell people all this stuff was success because I wasn't achieving success. Right. So I spent the next year of my life in a very dark place, literally and spiritually. And it all, (laughs) you know, all came, yeah, it literally was a bomb shelter. To paint the picture, you walk down this set of stairs into a concrete room. There were no natural light in the room at all. There was only a tube that went from the outside down into this bomb shelter. There's literally in the the 50s, they built all these bomb shelters down here in Point Loma, California. And there was only two bedrooms in the house. Gary had one, Greg had the other, and I was living in the bomb shelter. I had no income, no idea where I was going. And the relationship, I was dating this girl. I'm, I'm driving a 300ZX convertible, this really nice sports car that I couldn't afford. But I was locked into it. Right. I'm, I'm dating this beautiful girl who we had nothing but drama in our relationship. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm looking at my life going, what the heck am I doing mm. with my life? The only thing that was consistent was my health. I worked out every day because I didn't have anything else to do and I didn't know what to do. But Daryl, I questioned everything. I questioned my life. I questioned my purpose. I questioned my faith. I questioned whether I even wanted to be alive. And when you, when you get to that place in life, mm-hmm. you know, my hopes for anybody who's there, by the way, is, is that Daryl's message or somebody's message can inspire you to know that if you're still here, if you're still fogging a mirror, there's a purpose for you. Because the moment you figure out that purpose, things change. And so in the worst night of one of, one of, my, one of the worst nights of my life, the girl that I'm dating's ex-boyfriend breaks into the house, comes into the bomb shelter, drags her out of bed with his buddy. We don't know if they had guns or what, but they had my other friends pressed up against the walls. They drag her out of the house and take Holy her. smokes. Right? So in the midst of this drama and this chaos, we end up calling the police. He gets arrested and, you know, she's obviously returned, but it just, it was, it was a nightmare. Didn't sleep for days. Yeah. And in the middle of that, I I reached over and I grabbed a book called Conversations with God. And this isn't a a religious or spiritual conversation. This is more like, well, maybe spiritual, but this is like, you know, if you ever had that perfect person or that perfect message come in at the right time, for me, that's what that book was. And I realized, you know, I read that whole book cover to cover in one night because I couldn't sleep because of all this stress. Right, right, yeah. And feeling of insecurity that you, yeah, you lost. Yeah, like, like, what the hell's going on, you know? Right. And in that night, I remember, I said, you know what? That's it. I'm, I'm going to dedicate my life to helping other people change their lives. 
That's what I thought I was here to do. That's what I'm here to do. How that looks may change. It may be through building businesses. It may be through an inspiring talk. It may be just sitting down with somebody that, that we've adopted or donated to or who knows what it's going to be. But mm-hmm. I'm going to invest all of my life and my energy into that purpose. Mm-hmm. And I quickly went from, from having no money in debt to and being in a bomb shelter to a beach house uh, driving a hundred thousand dollar Porsche, wearing Rolexes, you know, making, I went, I made six figures in 90 days and this was 17 years ago. Wow. wow. And I, I, it wasn't that I was focused on the money. I shifted my focus to helping people because that's where money comes from. Money comes from creating value for other people's lives. So if you're, if you're not making enough money, it means you simply aren't creating enough value. It doesn't matter if you've created the iPod or if you've created a coaching call or if you've created a website system or whatever it is. If you're creating value for people, their exchange back is what we call stored energy or money. That's all money is, is stored energy. So if I, if I provide value to somebody over here, then they're going to pay me money, and that is a unit of energy which I can then reinvest or reallocate. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, so that that story about the bomb shelter is one of the times in my life where it was really difficult, and I realized that most entrepreneurs don't go financially bankrupt first; they go spiritually bankrupt, and then the finances fall. Follow, yeah, yeah, got it. It's a symptom. It's not the it's not the problem itself. That's actually really, really, really insightful. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Jim. I think uh, I think a lot of listeners or any entrepreneur can appreciate that, especially like you say, it, you are stepping out of the norm and sometimes it's tough and it's hard and you don't always have someone to guide you. So sometimes you're like, am I even on the right road? And so it can be overwhelming. And I think you're right. I think I think that's exactly it, that whether the state of someone's finances or even the state of their business is often a reflection of of them. And so it's more of a personal, would you then say that entrepreneurship then is also almost more of a path of personal development than even necessarily like financial development, that you have to fix yourself and your values and your beliefs and maybe your habits and routines in order to accomplish the things that you set out as goals? Is that- there, there is no doubt about it. I mean, the, the, the success you have in your business or in your life is going to be in di- direct proportion to your willingness and your ability to transform your thinking, to live your life the way that you want to live it. And so your business is a byproduct. Your, your lifestyle is a byproduct of who you are and how you choose to live. Right. That is so powerful. I already feel like we're not even done this interview. I already feel like I'm going to listen to this at least another two times to take some notes because I think you're right. I think you're dropping some 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 beautiful gems here, things that I can see for myself in my career and things that I just have seen with other people around me um, that are involved in the same sort of thing. So, Jim, what have been some of like the – is there any books that you would recommend, any kind of quotes? Of, well, let's start with books. What kind of reading would you recommend or for someone who's starting out or struggling? Um, I mean everyone's situation is different, but at least for you, were, were, were there any key books that helped you along your way? Well, you know, I think everybody is different, Daryl, but I mean, for me, I enjoy anything that has to do with business or money, and I enjoy anything that has to do with spirituality. So for me, I've read everything from, like I said, Conversations with God and Way of the, Way of the Peaceful Warrior to Celestine Prophecy. Those were some of my favorite, you know, uh, spiritual books to, you know, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I think mm. it's one of the best books that's out right now. Um, you know, that talks about, you know, why we do what we do in life and business. And, and, you know, some of the courses we've created have so much parallel with, with what he talks about in that book, because when you can change what they call your keystone habit, then you can change a bunch of other things. So you pick one area of your life to focus on, you know, it could be the habit of, um, you know, starting to go to the gym or starting to get out and surf or whatever it is. And you decide that that is going to be the one habit that's going to make the biggest impact in your life. And then you do what's called habit stacking. On top of that, you stack your next habit, your next habit, your next habit. So for example, if you already brush your teeth, right, which right. most people do. Right, right. And the concept of habit stacking is, well, geez, I've got a goal to change my mindset. All right, well, cool. Then what I'm going to do is since I'm already in the habit of brushing my teeth, I'm going to pull up my iPhone or a droid and I'm going to watch an inspiring video while I brush my teeth every day. 
So what you're doing is you're stacking on top of a habit you already have, another habit you want to ingrain. And then after watching that inspiring video, maybe the next habit you want to do is I'm going to start my workouts now. So I'm inspired, I'm motivated, and now I'm just going to start with one push-up. Today and this week, I'm only going to do one push-up. Now, why don't I do 10 or 50 or 100? Because we're developing habits. And if you want long-term sustainable success, your life will become a series of habits and environments. So I'd rather have people do one push-up and do it successfully for five days than to try to do 50 and do it unsuccessfully. The other piece is the, the best day to start is today, right now. And it reminds me of, uh, you know, Jack Canfield, right? Chicken right, Soup. Right, soul. right, of course, yes. Jack and I are really good friends. He and I spent years teaching our, our really high-end masterminds, like our $25,000 masterminds together. And where we started our relationship was he came into a program we run called the 90-Day Challenge. And this is all about changing habits. I was talking with Jack on the phone, and Jack is is just an amazing man. He's you know he's built the second largest book series in the world behind wow. J.R. Tolkien's books, wow. you know. The Hobbits, but he and Mark Victor Hansen have sold more books than anybody other than J.R. Tolkien. So what's what's interesting is, and he's a he's a a huge fan of personal development, right? He, he not only studies it but he applies it. So he decides he's going to come into our ninety day challenge as a player. And I got him on a call and I said, all right, Jack, what's one of your goals? And he goes, well, I want to get in better shape. He goes, I travel, I speak, and, you know, we, we, have, we have these exotic dinners and wines and things like that. And he goes, I've gained like 30 pounds that I don't want anymore. And uh, he goes, I, so I'm going to start working out. And I go, well, are you at your home in Santa Barbara right now? And he goes, no, 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 I'm on the road. He goes, so as soon as I get home, I'm going to join the gym. And I said, when are you going to be home? He goes, well, I'll be home next week. And I said, okay, cool. Are you ready to start changing your life today? He goes, absolutely. He goes, I'm going to join the gym as soon as I get home. And I go, okay, cool. I'm not willing to wait for that. As your coach, I'd like you to put the phone down right now and drop and give me five push-ups. And he goes, no, no, no. I promise I'll do it when I get home. And I go, I know you will, but I want you to start your change right, right now. Right <laughs> now. So he, he, he made a joke. He goes, no, no, no. I promise I'll do it. I go, Jack. No, you're doing it now. And he goes, you're not going to let me off, are you? And I said, absolutely not. Because if you do it now, you have a win. You are already successful. You're already in momentum. If you wait till next week, you have to remember to succeed. Mm. And so he put it down. He went through our 90-day challenge. And he completely, and, and that's where he first learned about the nine environments, he completely changed so many things about his life because he made that one decision to do those five push-ups and start it now. So if you're listening to this right now, Everybody on here should drop and do <laughs> one sit-up, do one push-up, do something to feel like you have a win. I, I'm actually doing this. There we go. I'm going right, to drop down. one push-up. Start it right now. One push-up. <laughs> That's awesome. Mine too. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, that was awesome. That is so brilliant. I can't believe like the stacking because I know that some things and it's you mentioned when you mentioned stacking, I thought of brushing my teeth right away. Um, because I was when you're talking, I'm like, I do that now. I don't do that successfully everywhere. Um, but that is so 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 powerful. Habits. We really are just habits that repeat every day. I mean, that's been said. I'm I'm blessed to know a lot of very successful people in business and athletics. And especially in the martial, art, martial arts arena, I have a lot of friends that have competed at the world championship level. And we always say that, you know, you're a world champion before you get on the mat. It's not that you show up and you are ordained world champion. When you show up at that tournament, you already are based on how you use your 24-day cycle. Everyone that shows up at that tournament only gets 24 hours every day. And it's about how best or whoever best utilizes those 24 hours, they're the ones that are going to win. They've got the most optimized diet for that sport, the most optimized like root habits, routines, friends, the best coaches. They've got everything, the best mindset about it, the best strategies. And it's all about being super, super optimized with your 24-hour period. So um, that's a really powerful session. I wish I'd taken more notes. Jim, <laughs> what, what are some – well, <laughs> we have the recording, so I, I really – I'm not even just saying that. I really am going to listen to this like two or three more times. Jim, are there any uh, key habits that you felt were quintessential to your success? Yeah, I mean, I always look at it as a healthy body, healthy mind, healthy finances, or what we call happy, healthy, and wealthy. I, you know, Daryl, we've surveyed thousands of people from countries all over the world. And when I say surveyed, I went out, this was probably eight or nine years ago, and I sent out emails to our database, and I forget how many thousands of people replied, but I asked them one simple question. What are your goals? 
and they filled it into this this survey that we had and put it into a spreadsheet. And then I went through and organized all these. And you know what I found? Across the world, everyone's goals, all of them fit into three categories. They wanted to be happier, they wanted to be healthier, and they wanted to be wealthier. And I asked the, the audience again, I said, if you were happier, healthier, and wealthier, would you feel successful? Because that's what most of these guys wanted was to be more successful. Right. And across the board, we heard yes. There wasn't one goal that wasn't a subset of happy like, you know, uh, I want to, you know, um, meet my soulmate. I want to travel the world. I want to be in the best shape of my life. I want to pay off my debt. I want to invest in real estate. I want to have a successful company. They all fit under those goals. So the first thing is, is to simplify your success. It's that simple. If you can be happier, healthier, and wealthier, and you can develop three habits around that, you win. It's that simple. Most people are trying to do 10, 20, 30 things a day. Don't do that. Every day when you get up, choose three goals for 90 days and choose three habits. That's it. Simplify your success. Build a foundation in that. The second thing is, is to understand that it takes time. Uh, yesterday, you know, you, you and I've talked about surfing and, and I don't know, have you been out in the surf this week here in San Diego? No, not this week. I've been out in almost a month. What? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, dude, I'm calling you forward on that. <laughs> so here's the thing. I went out yesterday and the surf is huge again. As a matter of fact, I think it's tapered off a little bit, but it was big yesterday. We went to Seaside and I, I want to tell this story because there's, there's a metaphor, especially for entrepreneurs in this. A lot of people would look at somebody who's out there surfing these big waves and they go, wow, that looks really easy. But until you've surfed, even on small waves, you don't understand the amount of training and preparation, both physically and psychologically, that are required to surf at any level. And I see entrepreneurs oftentimes who they look at the Bill Gates or the Warren Buffetts or the Tony Robbins or the Richard Bransons or the whoever's and they go, I want to be like that. And I encourage you to do that. But what I also want you to do is I want you to look at the path that they took to prepare and train and condition. You're talking about your martial arts. It's the same thing. Right. There's an inner game and an outer game. So I paddled out yesterday and I didn't have, first off, I didn't have the right equipment. I had a long board instead of a short board. And I went out into surf that was probably some of the peak waves were 15 plus feet high. Now, to put that into perspective, that's 15 feet from the back side of the wave which means that the front side of the wave is typically about 20 feet. What it also means is that the force and the power of that mass amounts of water coming down is enough to snap boards, break backs, and kill people. Wow. So I paddled out with a, a buddy of mine, Mike, and on the first you know, couple of waves as you're paddling out, there's a wall of water. Now, to put it in perspective, a 15-foot wave is going to leave somewhere around 10 feet 15 to 20 foot wave will leave about, you know, eight to 10 feet of white water that's just rushing at you. Right. So when you're paddling out, as you know, you know, if you are on a short board, you dive under, you do what's right. called duck dive. dive. Right. <laughs> and if you're on a long board, you flip the board over and they call it a turtle dive. And the hopes are that you can pull that board down and the white water goes over you so that you can flip the board back up, get on top of it and paddle until the next wave comes to get out beyond the breaking wave so you can rest and get prepared. So right. I got hit by a couple of strong ones. Fortunately, I did a great turtle dive. I got up, paddled, got up, but I was pretty, you know, pretty winded by the time I got out there. Right. Now, Sitting on there, I decided to grab a wave, and as you know, you either take the wave or you get taken by the wave when there's that much force. <laughs> so um, I got caught in a funky position, and I got rolled. I got drug underneath this 20-foot wave that when you get drug underneath, what happens is the wave is so strong that it's just going to drag you wherever it goes. It's taking you and the board probably another 30 to 40 feet underwater spinning right. and you don't know what's up or down. There's white water. You can't see anything and you're just rolling. Right. Now, if you're not trained and you're not prepared, if you haven't done this before, the natural response is fear and panic. Mm. But one of the things that entrepreneurs need to understand is, is that fear is, ne is a necessity panic is deadly. A healthy dose of fear keeps you on your game. Right. 
Right. It keeps you prepared. It helps you understand that there are obstacles coming up that need to be dealt with. Right. But if you panic, then you're not just taking a risk. You're at risk. Right, right, right. right. You can immediately get into a situation where you can die. Yep. Now, I'm bringing this up, and I, and I got rolled three times. I'm underwater. I was out of air. It knocked the wind out of me. I took on water in my lungs. If it hadn't been just luck that I, I rose to the surface as my board popped up, I probably wouldn't be having this interview today. Oh. And I, I realized that that day, the ocean won. I lost. I'm, I'm heading out. So right. I paddled in. And even the paddling in with 10-foot you know, white water was <laughs> – yeah. uh, me and a buddy of mine hit each other. We ripped up boards, this whole thing. It was a, it was a crazy scene. Wow. But I'm pointing this out because if you're an entrepreneur and you're standing on the shore – you know, 100 yards out, it may not look that big. It may not look that tough. It may not look like you need to do that much. But when you're getting into business, you need to set your goals to be doing big wave surfing, for example. But you need to practice. You need to rehearse. You need to have the right coaches and mentors there that will tell you if you're ready to step to that next level. In business, for you, getting in, you know, to the water may mean that you're, you're starting a part-time business while you're working another job. Right. It may mean your next level is to go from part-time to full-time. It may mean that you're getting from six figures to seven figures. It may mean you're going from being just you to hiring a staff. It may mean that you now need to build a, a wealth team, a, an advisory team. It may mean that you need to bring in capital or resources. You may need to expand your tech. All of these are, are waves that come at you. And as an entrepreneur, if you've got the right coaches and mentors and advisors there, they can help you understand the difference between taking a risk and being at risk. You should always take risks as an entrepreneur, but you should never put yourself at risk because at risk can take you out of the game. Yeah. Wow. No, that's such a good analogy. And even I was just, it, it, that was a really good story because you're right. There's so many ways to look at that. It's uh, when you were talking about getting tossed by the wave and being rolling and rolling, that almost sounds like trying to take on a business project or cause right. You're not, everything's going to be a home run. And if you've been through that before, if you have the training, the experience, even though it's chaotic and that, and even though you've, you've sucked in water, you know, you're going to be okay. As long as you stick to this, these core fundamentals, right? I've been here before I made it out. Okay. I just need to get to the surface and get to my board, you know, and just keeping the, that clarity of thought and, and focus. Um, and I think you're right. I think that was a really good analogy. Do you, how long have you been surfing? Is surfing a way that you've – is that something that's uh, – I know a lot of people like, you know, for them, surfing is very zen and they use it as analogies for other things. Is that it for you or is that just like a hobby that you took on while you were here in California? Do you learn a lot of lessons through surfing? Do you feel that transfer into normal life? Um yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody has their their discipline, if you will. Um, you know, I've played competitive tennis and beach volleyball, and I took up surfing about six summers ago. I think this is my fifth or sixth thump summer. And I'm not a world-class surfer by any stretch of the imagination. Some of the guys I surf with, they do big wave toe-in surfing, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty incredible. But, uh, you know, for me, what happened was is that, you know, I lived on the beach here in San Diego for a while and I'd look down at the surf and it was pretty and this and that, but I'm like, oh, the water's cold or, oh, I just don't feel like surfing or, oh, I'd rather go work out or play volleyball or whatever. I made, you know, I made all those conversations real for many years. And then finally I said, you know what, this is a lifestyle. This is a, this is something that I want to go out to. And I made a decision. You see decision at the Latin root, there's three words people should, especially entrepreneurs should understand. There's precision, incision, and decision. Precision means to cut before. So precision, cut before something. Incision means to cut into something. And decision means to cut away from something. So what I had to do is make a decision that I was going to quit doing some other things so I had the time to invest in surfing. And when I first went out and went surfing, there were so many amazing life metaphors that came up for everything because – you know, I'll, I'll just give one. I won't give all of them. But one was that, you know, <laughs> here I am. I'm paddling out for the first time. It is awkward. It's uncomfortable. You don't know how to balance on the board. And you've got these waves hitting you in the face and knocking you off the board while you're trying to paddle out. Yep. So that's one piece. You've got the elements right there of balance and force coming against you. But the other side is, and most people don't recognize this, you're laying on your chest, which means that all of your weight is on your oxygen. Mm. 
<laughs> so mm. you're paddling. You're, most of the time, you aren't in condition for it. You, you know, you're not trained yet. Right. So now you're going anaerobic while you're trying to drill out. These waves are hitting you, knocking off the board. They're coming one after the other after the other. And you're trying to get back on a board, scramble, paddle to get beyond these waves. And you immediately get exhausted. Yep. And there's people watching you. <laughs> yeah, well, you think they are. Most of the time, people don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Because they're doing their own thing. But <laughs> that's what you think, right? Right. So I remember that first day that I went out and I went, wow, what a great metaphor for starting up a new business. What a great metaphor for the person who's wanting to lose 50 pounds and has been overweight their whole life. What a great metaphor for the person who has left a relationship that's just been crap, whether it was in business or in, in, in family or, or personal relationship, and they, they are afraid to get back in the water because it's uncomfortable, because they're tired, because they're off balance. You know what? You're never going to enjoy the flip side of surfing, which is being at one with nature, being able to disconnect from all technology, being out there with your friends and enjoying a sunset, seeing dolphins ride in the waves with you, standing up on your first wave and knowing that at that moment in time, there's no other person in the world that is having that wave and that experience that the universe created that one experience just for you the same way it will in life and in business. That's and so – yeah, there's some great metaphors and they go on and on about life and business, but you can get that in your martial arts. You can get it wherever you want. I just happen to love surfing because it's such a um, it's such a connection with everything that's living. And I find that in my world, you know, I'm around computer screens and cell phones and technology, you know, so much that I need to disconnect from that and re-engage in what's real, which is the world. Right, right, right. That is so important. <clears throat> I know that um Balance is something that we all struggle with as entrepreneurs, and so I think you hit the nail on the head. And if you can find a hobby or, or, or a part-time sport that you find that you pull more out of it than just pleasure. I mean, pleasure on its own and just like you said, just disconnecting is great. But if you feel that it's also a useful tool to other elements of your life, I think that's a real win there. And I, I was listening to a recording by Gene Schwartz. And for anyone who doesn't know who Gene Schwartz was, he was just a copywriter, marketer, extraordinaire, um, started some legendary businesses. And he was saying that he felt all entrepreneurs should always have three projects going on because, you know, one project is enough to keep us busy and four or five or more can be too much to really keep a handle on, but three projects would be really good. And they don't all need to be business projects or work-related projects, but just something that keeps us active. And especially if there's transferable lessons or skills between them, it's really, really, really auspicious. And so that's what I was hearing when you're talking about surfing and what it does for you. So that's really awesome. Yeah, I got to get back out in the water. Um, I got nothing but excuse. I have a new car that doesn't have a rack on the roof, and that's, anyways, that's my that's my champagne problem. So no, <laughs> no more excuses. So, um, I was looking at Teslas the other day. You know, I've got that BMW M out here, and it, and I got a surf rack, and I finally found out the Teslas actually have surf racks on them. So I'll probably be switching. So. Ah, man, I want a Tesla so bad. I don't think this year. I'm hoping next year. We'll see. It depends how this this uh, fall goes. But are you you're looking at getting a Tesla? Yeah, but hey, let me let me back up because I'm not talking about cars here. But I, you, you said something, and I want to um, I want to share a viewpoint. You said that um, you know balance. You were talking about balance, and I want right. to toss something out. This was an insight I had, and I think entrepreneurs may hear this at a core level. Um, you know, most people are trying to seek balance in life, and what I teach people is balance is an illusion. Hmm. Instead of trying to be balanced. Focus on being centered in an unbalanced world. Mm. The reality is, like your martial arts, if you've got your center, no matter what's coming at you, you can deal. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, especially in early stages or any stages of entrepreneurs, you're going to feel like you've got life coming at you and business coming at you and problems and opportunities and all kinds of stuff coming up. And don't seek balance. You know, and because and what happens is in the short term, you always look like you're out of balance. If you back out to 50,000 feet or you back out 10 years, you realize, yeah, I was in balance. But don't focus on trying to be balanced. Focus on being centered in a very unbalanced world. Now, with, with that, what I do focus on is, again, I focus on three things every day. One for my happiness, one for my health, and one for my wealth. Because no matter what. Everything else I do for the day is a win if I get those three things in. The rest is all bonus, and it doesn't have to be difficult. 
But I just want to challenge people's beliefs around this goal of seeking balance because what I find is most successful people, most fulfilled people go through these ups and downs of where they invest their energy and their time. And you know, if you just look at a tiny window, they, they oftentimes look very unbalanced. But if you scale out, then you realize, oh, okay, so yeah, they, they worked hard for three years and then they sold their company and then they took a year or two off. Or, um, you know, in my case, I, I try to train like Olympic athletes where, you know, I work really hard for three weeks and then I take the fourth and sometimes fifth week of the month off. You know, so I have my rhythms down where I go, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to work the first three weeks of the month and I take the fourth and fifth week off. That's where I re relax. I recharge, I rejuvenate, I refocus, I travel, I do the things that, that are going to bring me back into the game and have me be sharp for the three weeks that I'm on the field. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really important to, that you – thank you for, for pulling me back and uh, identifying that. Uh, Kevin – because his last name. It's not Kevin Harrington. The other Kevin. He's on Shark Tank and he's also in Dragon's Den. He, anyways, he's a VC uh, venture capitalist and he was saying that – kind of what – his was his philosophy is different. He comes a bit more like the hard sale kind of backer. But his thing was that there's no such thing as balance, that you can't grow a company with balance. That Exactly like you say, like it takes – intense long periods of effort to really produce any sort of result anywhere so what you're just saying is i think if to if i were to take it to a martial arts analogy is just control yourself make sure that you're okay and make sure that you you do plan you have planned downtime and rest time you're not just go 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 all the time but that if, you know if you're a workaholic that's not necessarily a bad thing quote unquote because you don't have balance as long as you're centered and as long as you're happy and you're content with what you're doing and you make sure that your relationships are still intact and your health is still intact the happy healthy wealth as long as you are maintaining balance of those three things then it doesn't necessarily matter like there's no utopian formula of one hour spent on each day on this on that on whatever it's just making sure that you're moving those three kind of balls forward every every day every week is that is that correct or did i change it no nope, you're right on okay okay perfect jim that's awesome thank you so much for sharing all this today um what are you working on now what kind of stuff are you really passionate about and what's kind of what's new in your world i know you've been traveling for the summer i've been traveling too but what's 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 kind of fresh on your plate these days well, I, I'm in a stage right now where there's two things that really excite me. Number one is we're completely doing a rebrand and a reposition for the ultimate game of life really? to where we can go back out to the masses. Mm -hmm. um, we know we're a little heavy on the personal development side, and I want to move us back towards the edutainment where we're entertaining and educating. So we're aligning with things like uh, you know, the tough mudders where we'll go out and you know do these mud runs, and then we'll take the next day and we'll do uh, you know a mastermind, and then we're aligning with with great companies like GoPro who are really you know about filming the exciting things in your life and world and and I want to align with Tesla and BMW and some of these and, and really just inspire people to play a bigger game in life that's our our whole focus there so so we're I'm actually working on the side with our development team and they're redesigning it and the whole uh, I love the new look and feel and all that so that's going to roll out pretty soon and that will lead us to just building a massive audience. Right now we have people in 45 countries, but I want to get to 200 countries. Um, and then you know we'll work on the next phase of the business after that. That's awesome. And the other thing that's exciting me is, is you know, there's a couple of projects I'm working on with some of my uh, business friends where, where I'm helping them restructure and redesign their companies for growth. I, I mean, I, I just – I've kind of taken a hiatus from business the last few years, and now I'm starting to – my business brain is kicking back in, and I'm excited about the potential to help you know lots of people around the world transform their lives. So I've got a couple of secret projects that I'm working on there that uh, hopefully they'll scale and grow like the uh, the last couple we've done. That's awesome. And that's such a, such a noble cause too because that really is – so many people, they just don't even – like even when I talk to people sometimes, I just – it's – I <sighs> I know I'm an entrepreneur and that we're a different breed, but sometimes I find it very frustrating with people that like, you, what do you mean you don't have any goals? What do you, what do you mean you don't like, like, how do you just wake up and just go to work and come home every day? I don't quite get that or understand that. So um, I think that's a really good, good endeavor for you to take on to help others. Kind of oh, that's, more... that, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And I really see, like, sincerely, I really see that your 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 mission is to serve. I mean, there's been countless times that you've gone outside of your 
I don't know, you're not, it's not obligations, but where you've just been just that light, that light in the world that's just been either offering a helping hand to me or just some sort of connection. You just have that energy about you. So, um, Jim, I really appreciate you coming on the call today. Uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach out? I think the best way is just go to the the ultimate game of life dot com the ultimate game of life dot com or you can go to Jim Bunch J I M B U N C H dot com but um, right now I'm investing most of my time with the ultimate game of life because that's our our desire to inspire people to play a bigger game and have them focused on their happiness health and wealth yeah no and I I think it's anyone listening to this would be uh, a miss if they didn't at least check it out because I know uh, I know I'm going to be listening to this call for 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 all the gems you dropped and I'm probably going to go check that site out too and I'm going to give Lisa a call and ask her more because I just know she just raves and raves and raves about it so whatever changes you're bringing um, <laughs> it already sounds awesome so looking forward to it man um, yeah well thank you so much for being on the call today uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up no i'm just uh just excited and, and hopefully this was some value to people i would encourage people to listen to this a couple of times and know that if you listen to it today it will sound different if you listen to it in 30 60 or 90 days because you're constantly changing your beliefs are changing every cell in your body is changing and as a result, when you hear the same thing, you know, a couple of months later, it's going, other things are going to resonate that you weren't ready to hear the first time. Right. So enjoy this. That's what I do. I, I don't listen to something once. I listen to it six, seven, eight, nine, ten times over and over and over again so that I really get the core of the message. Yeah. And that's actually been a recurring th theme with some of the interviews that I've done is people, they reread the books, they reread all the, the or re-listen to the, these types of lessons. Because once you found people that uh, you know a viable source or sorry a, a trustworthy source for what you what you're hoping to accomplish or learn or develop you know most of us we only take in 10 percent or 30 percent of what we heard or were taught you know and there's so much more value left on the table so um, and Jim this has really been a content packed call and I really do appreciate you for being so open and forthcoming just with your own personal story and with the wisdom that you have to share so I very much very much appreciate it and thank you for helping me live an inspired day today and and I got my push-ups done, so I can take that off my list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad to hear it. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Bye for now. Bye. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success, so please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. Uh, you're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.